A few months ago, I discovered a new app that I, I'm using really a lot. When I perform live, most of the track I will play will be mine. But of course, I also here and there add uh, a little bit of something else, a different track that I love or something that I will actually use as a, a change between one style and, or, or another. So I prepare a lot of edits and actually this is, this is how I use them quite a lot to make the, the sets always fresh and to give them a little bit of spice. What makes stems a banger app is that it, it allows you to basically remix or to refresh some old songs, even some very old songs that it's impossible to find the acapellas using the AI. And this is what I want to show you basically. So let's go, follow me. Yeah, this is actually what I call my nest. This is where I, I do most of my production. The faster things go for me, the best I can really translate my creative ideas into sound. Uh, and so this is also one of the reasons why I like stems because it's very intuitive. When I prepare uh, my sets, uh, I mainly use my, my songs. For me, it's also the, the opportunity to sort of re-explore some works that I've done. And the track that I'm actually playing quite a lot was uh, a song I originally produced in 2002. It's, it's a uh, original African hook that was performed by Salif Keita and, and his uh, background singers who are really amazing. This song uh, called Madan. Na 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 ne, na 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 ne. It's actually something quite rewarding and, and, and quite sat very satisfying. Sometimes when you can play a song that you've produced 20 years ago and, and it, it, it's still kind of relevant, even if it has, of course, a taste of something that's a little bit old school. I was actually thinking that to have a, a, an alternative version that I can play in, in different conditions, in different sets, maybe more in club sets, would be good. And so I thought that I was going to make a special edit of Madan using stems. So the first thing, and you're going to laugh a lot about this, my uh, original session from Madan has gone in a hard drive somewhere. I don't have it anymore, so I didn't have the acapella. So I basically sampled my own song, which is very bad, actually, don't say it to anyone. I'm going to open stems. It's super basic. You uh, go collect the song you want to remix. So I put my Madan in this folder. It opens the song. And what's so impressive about stems, and I showed it to a few of my DJ friends and producer, is this. No bass, bass, and so of course. Uh, and it's actually very, very impressive, the quality of this. When I've isolated the element that I wanted to use, here is the acapella, so that part. And then I just hairdrop it. So it's always quite nice to scroll a, a, a little bit everywhere. The idea, the concept of this uh, reprod will be to uh, have a, a, a version that's more powerful than the, the especially the original. If I, if I was to reproduce it, which is something I, I clearly consider now, it will make a different version. It will not have the charm of the original, but it will be uh, just a, a different take on, uh, on the track. I'm gonna go a lot faster than this with stems and I'm just going to uh, basically team with uh, friends of mine called Camel Fat. Are you ready to they don't know about it of course and I'm going to steal their drums because I think they are amazing drum, prog drum programmers and especially I want to give that vibe to uh, the song so I'm going to go again in stems. This track I chose is, is actually very much of a drum track. So I'm just gonna actually erase the vocals to it. Fine. It's already quite good. <laughs>
superbe. So this is already a, a pretty encouraging result. Of course, they have the one thing that they are amazing at and I'm like very, very bad at, which is like the all breakdown, risers, snare rolls, FX, craziness, woo, -woo the, the kind of thing that, that makes the, the crowd go. These things, you know, which is like, this is like so much programming and programming, like all the automation of the reverb that you want to add, all these things. I'm like terrible at this. So, and these guys, they are so amazing at it. So this is where I'm going to use this to complete. Nice. Okay, and I think what I want to do is probably drop on the acapella, but since it's a very almost drum only song, I think it would be really nice to add uh, something else to the, to the big drop here. Definitely. So I'd like to add a bass to this production. And what I'm going to do is steal my own bass. And so I'm going to use my intoxicated bass. Okay, you know what? Let's change and let's use maybe the horns to make it like. Here it is. So yes, with stems, you can actually steal my horn sound that I, that I actually recorded live with four trombones. That was with the, the GTA boys and we had so much fun with this. And so let's see how this, this works. It's pretty clean, huh? Let's fix the key. That's better. Making these little edits is always something that's quite inspiring, even for original production, because it's, it actually makes you combine things that you probably wouldn't think of. Actually, for guys like me who have a strong sampling culture, even if I've, I very rarely use samples in the end, but actually I, I very often use samples in, in the making of the song, just either to give me uh, sometimes a chord or sometimes a sonic idea of where I want to go. It's easier to picture the result with already the result, even if you need to change it after because it's not yours typically. There's a, a lot of elements and a lot of things happening here. And of course it would probably need uh, more arrangement and stuff to finish. But I mean, in just maybe 10, 15 minutes, you have an idea of where you can go and then you can spend a few hours making a proper mix for it. it it's typically the kind of thing I do like almost every week. And, uh, and on almost every set, I have, some, I have one or two of these like that are new. Uh, and it's, uh, it's also quite rare that I use a song without touching it in a way, in a way. Very often I, I will get into it and see how, how I can sort of tweak it to, to fit my style or my set. And if it's not like my own songs, then it's always going to be at least my own versions, but stems make it easier. Yeah. 